message to the family. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He that believes on me, as the scripture has said, shall never perish. The Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still water. He restored my soul. He leadeth me in a path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley and the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go away to prepare a place for you, and if I go, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, ye may be also. Martha one time said to Jesus, Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Jesus says, Thy brother shall live again. Martha said, I know the resurrection. Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth on me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And he that liveth and believeth shall never die. and my foes came upon me to eat of my flesh they stumbled and fell though in a hole shall be encamped against me my heart shall not fear the war shall rise against me in this will I be confident one thing have I desired of the Lord that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and inquire in his temple. For the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me and he shall set me up upon a rock and now shall my head be lifted up above my enemies round about me therefore I offer this tabernacle sacrifices of joy I will sing yeah I will sing praises unto the Lord 
Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path because of my enemies. Deliver me not over unto the will of my enemies, for false witnesses are risen up against me, and such as read out cruelty. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. He shall strengthen thy heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Remember now, thy creator in the days of thy youth. By the evil days come now, nor the years draw nigh. For thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God, keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or be evil.
sisters in Christ, company of angels, in our atmosphere. We come at in this particular time that this that brings us earth with sorrow. Yet, as we have learned from Christ through experience, that in the time of our sorrow, the Lord can bring hope. So today, as we are here, celebrate the life of Jason Talos Curry. We want you to know that even though visibly we've come here to pay our respect, to share our thoughts, to send our blessings to the family, to want you to know there is an invisible presence through the Spirit of God that's here to comfort our hearts. The program will follow the pattern as it is printed out in the order with the indication by Mrs. Ladon Agga, Scripture reading, Mr. Brian Curry, Prayer of Comfort, Ms. LaDawn Agga, a selection by Stacy Sacco, and then we'll have remarks by Mr. Michael Jenkins and Mr. Charles Crawford, and our eulogy, words of comfort, prophetic words will come from our very beloved prophet, Nina. More. Allow the Lord to comfort and strengthen our hearts. Good morning and welcome. Thank you for joining us in this home-going celebration for Jason Curry as we pay tribute to his life. Please bow your hands in prayer. Father, we thank you for this opportunity of coming together to celebrate Jason and reflect on his life as a husband, as a son, as a father, as a brother, as an uncle, and as a friend to many. We give you thanks for the time that we had Jason in our lives. Holy Spirit, we invite you in our midst, and we give you freedom and liberty in this place. Have your way in this service and among the people. I thank you in advance for ministering to the hearts of every person in this place. And I give you praise for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Brian? his son to be the savior of the world. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the son of God, God lives in him and he in God. And we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in him. In this way, love is made complete among us so that we will have confidence in the day of judgment. Because in this world, we are like him. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear, because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. We love because he first loved us. If anyone says, I love God, yet hates his brother, he is a liar. For anyone who does not love his brother, whom he has seen, cannot love God, whom he has not seen. And he has given us this command. Whoever loves God must also love his brother. My brother loved me. I 
love my brother. My brother loved God and God loved him and loves him. We love you, Jesus. Because the Lord is my shepherd, I have everything I need. He lets me rest in the meadow's grass, and he leads me beside the quiet stream. He restores my failing and he helps me to do what honors him the most. That's why I'm saying that 
That's why I'm saved. That's why I'm saved. Saved in His arms. Because. We have everything that we need. He lets me rest in the meadow's grass. And he leaves me beside the quiet streams. He restores my failing will. And he helps me to do what honors him the most. That's why I'm saved. I feel so safe. That's why I'm saved. We're saved in His arms. And we When the storms of life are raging And the billows And the billows they roar I'm, I'm so glad That he Two hardest things to say in life is hello for the 
first time. And goodbye for the last. Moira Rogers. I read that this week. And it made me think of the hello for the first time. I'm here to pay tribute to a kind soul, an indulgent heart, and a disciplined mind. Jason Curry was one of the most precious people in my life. In 1988, a scrawny little kid, he probably weighed 70 pounds at the most. He walked up to me and we'd never met. I'd seen him. We were, we were at church. He said, Hey, do you like comic books? And I looked at him and I said, Well, yes, I do. <laughs> and we've been friends ever since. That's a 35 year friendship. And I can't slum a 35 year friendship in a couple of minutes. I'm going to try, but I, I can't do it. But I've shared a large part of my life with Jason. And I got to thinking about it. When he went to college, I, I went to work. I didn't go to college. And we would talk once a month, maybe. For the past 20 years, we've talked. not have been vocal, it might have just been a text. I would get a what up. <laughs> and I'd be like, nothing, just sit here. And that'd be it. And we didn't speak to the next day. But for the past 10 years, I've spoken to that man for every day in some way or another. And Jason loved his wife. He loved his children. He loved his siblings. He loved his parents. And he loved his friends. And it was an unconditional love. It didn't matter what, what any of you did. And he may have been mad at you. He may have told me he was mad at you. But he still loved you. <laughs> now we get to, um, Jason had uh, an eclectic group of friends. <laughs> Jason taught me a lot about art and a lot about music, and he was very passionate, especially about the art. And we had this, we had about the same musical taste, except for one thing, and that was Steely Dan. <laughs> <laughs> no matter how hard he tried to get me to like <laughs> I do not like Steely Dan. <laughs> but I caught myself listening to Steely Dan yesterday. We went to movies together. We talked about movies together. We talked about comics, of course, because that's how we met. And sent me a picture of a beach trip. It's me, this, me on this side with my nine-year-old daughter and Jason on this side with his nine-year-old daughter and we went to the beach for four days. Just us four. So it's not like uh, he's been in my life for 35 years. He's been in everybody else a lot of you guys life for a lot longer. I'm just giving you what, what I'm going through. And we really like, Jason really like bad movies. <laughs> <laughs> I like bad movies. <laughs> I, I don't have anybody to pick up the phone and call and say, hey, to watch this movie, it's so bad. <laughs> Jason was my go-to. 
He's who I vented to, who I complained to, who I celebrated a win with that day. And I don't, I don't have that now. Not with, not with Jason. And it didn't matter what it was, I'd tell him what I thought, and he'd sit back and look. And he, it was like he was Confucius, you know. He, he would say something. He would say something like he was just a kung fu guy, a master of kung fu, and he was not sugarcoat it. And he would tell me what he thought, whether whether I liked it or not. And I, I, I love him for that, because you have those fair weather friends that they'll lie to you just to make you feel better. Jason did not. <laughs> I'm going to miss my friend. Jason was my best friend. He was a lot of people's best friend. I think if you were friends with Jason, Jason was your best friend. <laughs> We see what Jason's worth. Or there'd be a handful of people here. I have, I have a very hard childhood that I kept to myself. And Jason knew what I went through even at middle school age, younger. And I would go to their house, to Jason's house, and spend time with his mom and dad and his brother and sister. And they made me a, um, an honorary curry. <laughs> <laughs> saw him show favoritism to any of his children. Him or his wife, they, they, you guys, they were all equal. In my eyes, his, his mom was curry. <laughs> she just didn't know every time she hugged me, what a hug meant to me. But Jason knew. Pink murder came into my life. <laughs>
Jason told me that he was going out with Tinko. I said, man, how'd you get me? I said, how'd you get so lucky? That was awesome. She wouldn't have told you what time it was. Yeah. He just looked at me, and I remember it like he was telling me yesterday. He said, age, my brother. <laughs> I got better with age. <laughs> you were Jason's son. You are Jason's son. I can't think of another couple that's supposed to be together. <laughs> or supposed to be together than you two. He loved taking murder. Everybody in this room knew it if you were ever around him. And this is my favorite Jason quote about Tink. Murder might not be for everybody. <laughs> Conversation we had just with just me and just Jason at any point that one of you didn't come up. And if it weren't for Jason, I wouldn't be friends with half the people in this room. <laughs> he was the center, the focal point of what I call the group. Now we gotta find a new focal point. Things out, and I apologize if I did because Murder said I could only talk for two minutes. We all got lucky because Jason did live his life right. Our friendship, the 35 year friendship we had, it was it was a very fantastic ride. I can I guess I say fantastic. No, it was a fantastic ride, Jason Curry. And I wouldn't trade for the world. And I can say as long as I'm still on the earth and I have breath in my lungs. He will be remembered and he will be missed. Good morning.
good to see everybody in here today. Well, starting off, mother, father, brother, wife, daughter, grandchild, and many friends. Today we to, today we're here to celebrate Jason Curry. Personally, I admire him tremendously. You know, from family to friends, it didn't matter. He was like the greatest person I ever met right then and there. And honestly, I don't know how we met. I really don't. We just clicked from the beginning, and that was it. You know? um, he was intelligent, creative. Yeah, he was a creative genius. I've seen him create so much stuff musically, also art. He was just, he was just a total package. He's also dedicated to building a strong family, a healthy foundation for his family, which we talked about a lot. You know, he was very, very concerned about his family and what the outcome is going to be in his family. Yeah, but I'm glad he invited me into his family. That's why I like to thank these guys right here, Wen and Audrey. If it wasn't for them creating this beautiful human being, you know, maybe. Very old song says, if I could help somebody 
Along the way, my living will not be in vain. From the testimonies, from the remarks of these various friends, brothers, Jason, truly, his life is not in vain. Especially here, the gentleman say, he saved my life. His living is not in vain. We've been able to get perspective, somewhat perspective, of the life the celebration of Jason. Now we want to hear, Lord, what say you? Because the ultimate, the ultimate understanding, all I'm getting, we get understanding, the ultimate understanding, it comes from God, through the Spirit of God, through the vessel. Today, to give us spiritual perspective, hear from God, we have Prophet Nine More, found the chosen anointed, Pastor of Kingdom Embassy of Lancaster, Prophet Night Moore, to come and give us spiritual perspective. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, we come to a celebration. Yes. Let's celebrate him. Yes. Let's celebrate his life. Let's give God praise. Are he worthy to be praised? Thank God for his life. And I heard some of you say, thank God that had not been with him helping you. You need to be giving God some praise. You need to just bless the Lord on today. We come for a celebration. To celebrate life. We're not celebrating his death. We're celebrating his life. So in that respect, come on, let's stand to your feet. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Sure you do. For those that want to have 
God. You know, a lot of preachers say, you know, this is not the time, but this is the best time for salvation. This is the best time for you to accept the Lord as your personal Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 I came here to rejoice. You know, I don't need nobody to help me praise God. Because you don't know what I've been through. I just shot right and proof it all by myself. Hallelujah. Because God has truly been good to me. And I know he's been good to some of you all as well. Some of you had COVID. But God kept you. Some of you experienced in the hospital. But God kept you. Some of you experienced uh, people, loved ones, even losing their life. But God kept you. So we got a lot to praise God for. We got a lot to be thankful for. And it's okay to say amen every now and again if you know that you're a witness of it. It's okay for you to lift your hand every now and again if it's you've been through that and God has kept you. Amen. So I come to give, amen, the current family and the P family encouraging word. I come to give your friends, their friends, an encouraging word. If you would, those of you, and, and if you don't have your Bibles in Mark, when you get home, mark the fourth chapter, a familiar scripture. And I tried to get over it, but God kept bringing it back to my spirit. He kept saying, Tico, Tico, after I read the scripture, he said, rock steady, baby, rock steady. You know, young people say this thing, rock steady, rock steady. If you don't know what rock steady means, it means stand still. Stay in your ground. Amen. Rock steady. My heart goes out to the families of your loved ones, Tinker, your husband, children, your father, Audrey, Gwen, your son, Elder P and Brother Dara, your, your son. Amen. I don't know the rest of his siblings, but to God be the glory. I give honor to you and I thank God for what he's doing in the lives of these young people at this, at this time and season. You may think you're too young, but Jeremiah says, and if you look at it, read Jeremiah, he would tell Jeremiah, I'm the one that made your vow. I'm the one that made you. So he said, don't fear. Speak the word. And we have to speak the word in truth when they want to hear it and when they don't want to hear it. Mark, the fourth chapter, the 35th verse, and it said, In the same day, when even was come, he said unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had sent him away, the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat upon the ship so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they awake him and say unto him, Master, carest not thou, we perish? And he rose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. Amen. Thus I have read Mark the fourth chapter, verses 35 through 39. I will come as a topic to you. Don't rock the boat, but rock steady, baby. Rock steady. Don't rock the boat, but rock steady. And I know some of the young people know what I'm talking about when I say rock steady, baby. Rock steady. The fact is God has not promised us a storm-free life. Matthew 5 and 45 says he sends the rain on the just and the unjust. Being the sons and daughters of Christ does not exempt us from going through storms. Some of us think the only time we go through a storm is when we disobey God. But in this chapter, the disciples got into a storm by obeying God. Thank you, God. They were in the center of God's will. But yet, they were in a storm. If you're hoping to go through life without pressure, without criticism, without temptation, without tragedy, bad news, then you're living in a fantasy land. So in order to survive, you must know Jesus is the captain of our boat. Hebrews 6, 19 
and 20 says that Jesus is the anchor of our soul. Both sure and steadfast. Nothing can break him which reaches into the interior behind the veil. He's the forerunner that opened the way before us. In the New Testament time, they say that the harbors of some of the cities will have sandbars just outside of the harbor. And if a boat got there when the tide was out, it wouldn't get into the harbor. They would just take the anchor and throw it over the harbor. It didn't matter if the winds beat against the boat because they understood that when the tides came in, the ship will follow the anchor right into the harbor. Guess what? When you throw your anchor over and your anchor is in Jesus, all you have to do is wait on him and he'll pull you on in. Jesus is an anchor. He's our heaven. Wherever you go, he goes. Let not your heart be troubled, he said in John 14. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. And if I go prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you myself. That where I am, there you may be also. He's given us a sense of direction and purpose. So in Mark 3 and 9, he told the disciples to have a small boat. Keep ready for him because of the multitude. Least they should crush him. Jesus had gained followers as well as haters. Don't you know you're going to gain haters when God begins to bless you? Don't you know you gain haters when you do the will of the Father that sent you? The Pharisees were jealous of Jesus popularity. They were concerned about standing in their community and in their personal game. Where Jesus was concerned about people everywhere. So verse 35 says that when evening had come, meaning at the end of the day, storms have no particular time to come, Sister King Tinko. Storms don't have no particular day to come. Storm don't have no particular month or year to come. They just come. Storms, they come. They were right where Jesus told them to be still running into a storm. He told them, let us go, meaning I'm sending you along, but I'm going with you. That's a good thing. He said, I'm sending you, but I'm going with you. Hebrews 13 says that he will never leave you, nor will he forsake you. He went so far as to say in Psalms 130 and 39, 139 and 8, and say if you ascend to heaven, I'm there. Yeah. If you make your bed in hell, he yeah. said I'm there. Yeah. So you can't escape God no kind of way. Right. Wherever you make your bed, he said I'm right there That's with you. Right. He said wherever you go, I'm right there with you. Watch steady, baby. Just hold on. Keep on pushing. He's going with us to the other side. Second Timothy said that he desires to all men and women to be saved and come to the knowledge of truth. Storms happen to the ones that's close to God as well. But I come here today to tell you, don't rock the boat. Just rock steady, baby. Just keep on pushing. Just keep on doing the will of the Father. Jesus is with them, but yet still running into a storm. There are different kinds of storms that may rise up in our lives. But James 1 and 2 says, when he calls, he, because he knew we would when you face trials, not if. When you face trials, he said, count it all joy. Yeah. Getting ready to cross over now and leaving the crowd. Jesus is now taking his disciples from the classroom to the laboratory. See, we're going to have to go through testing times. We're going to have to go to, th through trying times. So now kind of strange when you go through fiery trials. They're kind of strange when you go through different things in life. Know that you can call on God. Know that you can call his name. And he said I'm just a breath away. Know that you can speak his name in Jesus just a whisper away. Just rock steady baby. Don't you move. You just stay in faith. Get ready to cross over. Now leaving the crowd. Jesus is now taking his disciple from the classroom. The storms were sent to show us God's power. He's still strong in the midst of problems. He's still there in the midst of a storm. He will keep us anywhere we go. The Bible said that he left the, men, he left the multitude and took Jesus along. You better be careful who you take with you. Well, Jonah was disobedient to God. He told him to rise up and get up and go to the Nineveh and that great city and cry out against for the wickedness. Where Jonah did 
went to Tarsh and got on board. So God sent a storm. You see, somebody may think, well, God won't allow, God won't allow this to happen to me. But I beg the difference. God didn't send it, but God will allow some things to happen in our lives. Then he had the audacity to say, pick me up and throw me overboard. Why didn't he just jump off? Some of us know we are watching the boat and think no one knows. Some of us know that we're in the boat with our friends or in our family, but we're rocking the boat and we're not being steady. We're being deceitful. Then there are some noise that God told you to build a boat, but yet you're still trying to ride with someone else, causing the boat to rock. Some God said, go and help build, but you want to sit back and watch the boat sink. Well, the man just said the storm arose suddenly. Ah, suddenly your whole life is turned inside out. We didn't anticipate any of this to happen, but we know that the Bible said that every man born of a woman should surely die. So we know that it's coming, but we don't know when. We don't know how. We don't know where. We don't know. We just don't know, but we know that it's coming. Thank you, God. Suddenly, your whole life is turned upside down, doing the will of God, but suddenly. Preaching and teaching, but suddenly. But suddenly, here I am, pastoring and preaching, but suddenly trouble came. Yes. Speaking in tongues, but suddenly. The waves beat into the boat so that it was already filling. So first, first Peter 4 and 12 says, Beloved, don't think it strange concerning the fiery trials which is to try you, as though some strange things are happening to you. I heard a preacher put it this way. If what somebody else say about you is greater than what God says about you, then I need to stop serving God and start serving them. Right. Well, Psalms 8 and 4 says, Who is man that I should be mindful of him? Even though Jesus was with them, he was a seed. This shows us the humanity part of Jesus. Neither, either he was tired from ministering to the people or he was just resting in himself. Knowing that his father got this thing. He knew that storms was going to come. Jesus was teaching the disciples that when storms come, either your faith will rise up or your flesh or your fear is going to rise up. Jesus knows the ending before the beginning, but just didn't show them in the in-between stuff. God would show us the coming out and when we got into it, but he don't show us the in-between stuff. See, it's the in-between stuff that mess us up. He show us that we're going to be blessed, but he don't show us how to get there to get blessed. All right. God will allow some storms to come up in our life. So we can have a strong hand in it. I heard a songwriter say, our God is greater. Our God is stronger. Our God is higher than any other God. We need to rock steady, baby, and don't tilt the boat. This storm wasn't like any storm that had been true through, but Jesus was asleep. You got a problem and it seems like he's asleep and fall off. Don't hear your cry. They went to him and woke the teacher up. Don't you care? That we perish? Jesus, with his bad self, just rose up and rebuked the storm. One thing about it is that when Jesus is in our ship, you won't go under. He said, at least you dash the foot against the stone. I'm going to encamp my angels round about you. In the Greek, this is the same word used when Jesus did exorcism. He showed the disciples his power over creation, but yet over demonic forces in the world. Don't you know you have the authority and the power to rebuke? You have the power and the authority to cast out in the name of Jesus? There are things that are causing problems in our lives, but the resulting circumstance that are troubling us. Intense worry and anxiety may be the circumstance, but the loss of a job may be the cause. Don't tip the boat, but just rock steady. So Jesus asked them, why are you so fearful? Their reaction to the storm was caught up in the fear of the storm. Not only if he said that they feared a great fear, they feared not just the storm, but they won. They rebuked and calmed the storm. So the power of God showed up when Jesus got up. He got up with all power in his hand. The same resurrected power that Jesus rose with, he said, I give it unto you. You have the same authority.
authority to rebuke. You have the same authority to cast out. So God was trying to get them to trust him in all things. How is it that you have no faith? Whatever you're going through, just don't tilt the boat. Just rock steady. Whatever life circumstances throw your way, just rock steady. Yet for a little while, you may have suffered grief and all kinds of trials and tribulations. They come so that your faith are greater worth than gold, which perishes even through refined or refined. Some of us are in the refiner's fire, that we are being refined. We are going through some things, and we think that because we are living today, we are going to be living the next morning. But rock steady, baby. Don't give up. Rock steady and know that God is in control. He's the anchor of our soul. Rock steady means to be calm and go with the flow. Be consistent. So in this, I want to encourage the family to rock steady. Don't you dare give up hope. Don't you dare to throw in the towel. Don't you dare turn around. You keep your faith flipped to God. You keep trusting God. You keep believing God. You keep calling on God. You keep going to God. You keep praying to God. But just don't tilt the boat, baby. Just rock steady. Just keep on doing what thus says the Lord. Rock steady, baby. Come and let us stand to our feet. At this particular time. Thank you, Lord God. There may be somebody in here, this place, at this time, that say, Lord, I don't want you to catch me without my work undone. My boat has been rocking for a long time. And it felt like it tilted over at some point. So now I want to give my life to you. I want to give my life away. So that you can use me. It doesn't matter if you are young or old. It doesn't matter if you are a baby. It doesn't matter. This is the time for us to really give God what's due him. He made us. And he made us in his image. He called us when we learn these things. There are some things that we got to unlearn. I remember the Holy Spirit telling me there's some things that we have to unlearn because our parents didn't know no better. They taught us what they knew. And we learned that. They didn't teach us how to praise God. They didn't teach us how to really go to God. They, used, they taught us to say, Our Father which art in heaven. That's the prayer. But now is the time to give your life to the Lord. We don't know the next hour or even the next second what's going to happen. But we know if we know our life is in the Lord's hand, we know where we're going. He said they don't know me because that's why they don't call on me. They know of me but don't know about me. So there's a difference of knowing of God and knowing about God. See, I know of Tinko, but I don't know her. I just met her today. So in that, when we know God and we trust God in whatever circumstance or situation you're going on in your life today, and I know we're going through some. Just before I got here, somebody prayed, asked me to pray for this young man because he was contemplating on killing himself. I told the Lord, if it's in my power and you will give me the strength, I will snatch every child I can from zero to a hundred. I will snatch them out of hell if I can. So this is the opportunity. Now, and if you don't want to come now, see me after service. Or see one of the ministers and say, I want to get my life right with God. I want to accept the Lord as my personal Lord and Savior. We don't want closet Christians. You just want to go in the closet and don't want nobody to know that you're saved. Don't want nobody to know that you love the Lord. Guess what? I stay apart. I change parties. I still make parties. I get hot. But I remember what I did. 
directors, if you'll come at this time. Yes, you may be seated. You may be seated. And my friends, the final resting place will be at the Lancaster Memorial Park. And for those of you that will be driving in the procession with us, please use your flashes and drive with extreme care. Also, my friends, we're asking you to load your transportation as quickly as possible, please.
lift. We're gonna lift at the same time. Lift. Hold what you got. 